Today on the Mr. Maple Podcast, Tim and Matt interview Ultimate Maple Collector, our very own Brian Rule. Hey guys, I'm Tim and welcome to the Mr. Maple Show. Today we got an awesome podcast for you today. We air this podcast on your favorite podcast platform weekly. So find us on your favorite podcast platform, give us a subscribe and also give us a five-star rating that helps more people find us. Hey guys, I'm Matt. We got a fun one for you today. I think we got the ultimate maple collector interview and, uh, and if you like these uh, podcasts, you can always find us on YouTube under the Mr. Maple Show. It's the same name as the podcast platforms. We do air the video component of these videos on YouTube on uh, 8 p.m. on Sunday evening. So it's a great way to get involved there in that live chat. If you want to participate in our Mr. Maple Show community, that's a great way to get involved. Uh, we've got a good one for you today, though, guys. We've got a very special guest in studio. I think one of the top maple collectors in the entire world. And uh, I'm honored. I'm honored to actually call him a, a good friend, and brother here. Uh, we, we consider Brian an honorary member of the family here. We've got Brian Rule in house. Hey, thanks for having me. You know, come all this way from <laughs> Oklahoma uh, to come and do this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm I'm glad to be doing this with you guys this morning. Uh, it is a great uh, pleasure and honor uh, to be a part of the Mister Maple crew and family and everything. Man, it's been. It's been a great experience. It's been an amazing journey, and uh, I'm, I'm happy to kind of share my story. I don't think you get more ultimate than being somebody who decides they're taking a completely different change in life because they love Japanese maple so much that they're moving from Oklahoma to North Carolina right. to join a, a team of growing Japanese maples. Now, you might have seen the history of Mr. Maple, but no episode of that's complete without an episode on Brian. So we've been planning on doing this. Um, you know, Brian is a huge part of our team. And if you're not familiar with his backstory, Brian was one of our best customers in Oklahoma. Brian was a huge maple fanatic, huge garden in Oklahoma. And, uh, he left that garden behind to become part of our Mr. Maple team. And so he moved out here to North Carolina and, uh, Brian is a Japanese maple enthusiast of the utmost. Like Brian's got that, that love for maples. He gets us fired up too. And so that love is contagious. So we wanted to kind of get him on here and interview him. I was joking with Brian that if he didn't work here and he was visiting, like we would clear our schedule. Like this would be like a top interview. So I'm like, <laughs> don't downplay this man. You're, you've got like, we, we've got so many fun guests we want to have on this show, but it wouldn't make sense to go any further without getting Brian on here. Brian would be coming in on the limited release. Him and his wife, Francis, yeah. both love Japanese maples. In fact, Francis is a horticulture major, yeah. which is crazy. I was going to get to that in a little bit. A lot of people think you're you're the plant plant guy. <laughs> I, I think Francis might have uh, just as much plant passion as you do, especially for the maples. And the, my favorite part was that Brian on the limited release was often called the fastest fingers in the West yeah. because he would be on top of it, getting the limited release stuff right away. So much so that people were accusing you of working for us well before you ever decided you were actually going to do it. It may have been like the thing that like started planting it in your head. Like, hey, maybe I could go work for him. Well, yeah, I mean, I got accused of that for many years. Uh, and so it was always funny because, uh, you know, we, we went through a period of time there where we were really kind of in, in high gear of planting maples in our garden. And Frances was a big part of that as well. She's always kind of been an enabler of that for me. Which is awesome because we both share the same interest and, and passion about plants in general and, and gardening. And so it, it, it's always been a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, I've, I definitely got accused of working for you guys. Well, for one, you know, and I'll start with this because uh, I've always been like the biggest fan of Mr. Maple. Uh, I've always felt like your nursery had the best quality plants best pricing. I mean, I, and I, and I know now it seems like I might be biased, but before, you know, even before I was always promoting your, your nursery because I believed in what you were doing and you always kept me excited about plants and, and kept coming back. And, and, uh, so that really kind of set the mark in my mind of, you know, like I was always shopping a lot of different nurseries, but I, I kept coming back to Mr. Maple because I was like, man, there's just something extra that I get here 
And you guys always made me feel uh, important and special in my orders and just always took care of me. And so, you know, it, I, there was a loyalty there that I that I developed over the years. And the vast majority of the plants that I grew in Oklahoma came from you guys. Um, so, you know, it's always been a, a very mutual relationship for sure. One of the, one of the funny things, uh, the, the thing, one of the things that started it too was there was a lady uh, you know, we had that one-on-one sale and she got quite <laughs> miffed. I think Brian beat her out on a specific <laughs> plant. And, you know, we do a one-on-one sale a lot of times, especially in the winter months. We'll start yeah. that in like January or December. And sometimes it runs all the way through March, but you know, Brian, Brian was quite quick at the checkout. And so, uh, you know, uh, at one particular time he'd went to some social media to post and kind of gloat a little bit about what he had, uh, he'd got this rare plant. And she said, that guy works for them. And I know it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I joked when he moved out here, I was like, you know, that one lady is like, I knew it. I knew it the whole time. <laughs> so if you're watching, he does work for us now. I, I uh, do, thanks for that's... planting that seed. And, uh, just a, such a fun relationship. Uh, we, we've always had a fun relationship. And one thing I'll say, that now that Brian's here, he challenges us uh, to do more because Brian always said, well, Mr. Maple did this, but a little bit more. And yeah. so that's something with our with our YouTube channel, with our podcast yeah. that uh, we want to keep doing. So like with Brian here now, we're trying to do even more to give you that little bit of extra. You know, one thing we do is all of our podcasts, all of our uh, YouTube shows are free. They're not behind a paywall. These are things you can you can access. You don't have to purchase this. It's it's basically a full book of information, but we want to provide that to you free of charge. And that Brian's a huge part of that. Brian's been editing videos, making things look good, making us sound good, uh, down to the details that shock me sometimes when I find <laughs> out all the, the steps he goes to just to make the videos look incredible. Well, it's been, it's been a really cool experience. You know, uh, I, I know we joked about it for years, like, you know, and then finally, you know, Matt got the call and I said, you know, so how serious are you about, you know, if I come to work for you, you know, I don't know if you ever actually expected that call, but, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing how that worked out. And, uh, you know, Oklahoma, uh, was an amazing experience of growing maples and it really, uh, set me up, I think for this opportunity, uh, which in the beginning, I, that wasn't my goal was necessarily that, um, but just my interest um, and attention to detail and just how far I, I just personally, I got into Japanese maples mm -hmm. kind of laid the groundwork, I think for this opportunity, which at the time I didn't realize that's what, what that was going to lead me to, you know, it was just something I was really passionate about. I created this beautiful, beautiful garden in Oklahoma. Uh, one of the last things that happened before I left that garden, which I'm really proud of is the, the Tulsa world came and did an article on my garden and, and one of the claims was that, that I had probably the most extensive Japanese maple collection in Oklahoma. Um, and, uh, it was, it was really cool. Uh, I met so many great people, uh, in all my experience there and growing maples. And, and it, it taught me a lot about gardening and, and how to grow plants. And, and it, it really did kind of lead me to this opportunity. Which now, is Brian, awesome. where exactly were you at in Oklahoma and where are you from in Oklahoma? Also two part question. So, uh, originally born in Henrietta, Oklahoma, which is, uh, you know, for those who know that little tiny town in the middle of nowhere, it's the home of Troy Aikman. Okay. So like the Dallas <laughs> nice. Cowboys quarterback. So growing up, you know, it was all Dallas Cowboys and, but I was born in Henrietta. Um, and then we moved to Tahlequah, which is a, a little a small town there in the middle of Cherokee Nation. Um, and then we eventually wound up in the Tulsa, Oklahoma area, which is where I had my garden. So that's kind of my journey. And most of my life was spent in Oklahoma. There's a few times I moved to Arkansas, and Indiana, uh, but always kind of wound up back in, in Oklahoma. So. so in your Oklahoma garden, how many Javis maples did you have? You know... <laughs> As you know, as collectors, you know, sometimes those numbers fluctuate uh, depending on crazy, you know, whatever weathers you have and, and all the challenges it is for growing plants. Um, but I would say, you know, I generally stayed around 250 cultivars, different cultivars in the garden. And that's not counting. And that's really just Japanese maple species. I mean, I wow. had probably another 200 plants of all different other varieties along with that. And plus, uh, you know, my wife got into <laughs> collecting hostas and, and, and we did these huge shade beds with ferns and stilbies and, you know, just all different type of plants that would grow well in shade. I had a 
section of the yard there where it was a bunch of giant oak trees. So it kind of provided the perfect climate for my yard mm-hmm. because, you know, I needed shade in Oklahoma to grow a lot of maples. Um, so it gave some relief through the day, no matter where I was planting, it was either in shade or it was, was going to get some shade until later. And so it's always kind of a, a nice, uh, setup. I kind of got fortunate, uh, most of the time in Oklahoma too, uh, you know, the, the soil is not very well, a lot of clay and rock. Uh, but I was blessed and fortunate to have a, a, a property that had some amazing soil there, had a really nice, dark, rich, sandy loam soil very good drainage and, and just high in nutrients. So it was uh, just the perfect, you know, setup to, to, to do what I set out to do. And I was really proud of, of what I accomplished there. Now, uh, you recently had an anniversary with your partner in crime and partner in Maples there. Yeah. Francis, how many years y'all been together now? 18 years, man. That's She's amazing. been putting up with me for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> what and a marriage, I, too. He's like, hey, honey, I want to move across the country to focus on Maples. So shout out to Francis. Yeah, she's she's always been my biggest supporter in everything I've done in my life. Brought a lot of, you know, stability to my life. And, and uh, together, we've been able to accomplish a lot of great things. And uh, it's, it's, it's a big milestone, you know, hitting that 18 years, you know how it is. I mean, life, life is, is always throwing curveballs at you and, and there's always work to be done, especially on a marriage. You know, it's never, uh, always just an easy thing. You have to keep at it. And, uh, you know, it, it, but we're, we're excited to be in this next chapter. You know, we, we, we kind of, we were ready for a new experience, I think. And, uh, you know, this North Carolina, we, I remember when we first came out here and visited, you know, I just, like there was something about Hendersonville and the mountains that just like spoke to me. And I was like, man, this is beautiful. Like I, I, I could see myself living here. So, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, to think that we've come 18 years and here we are in the mountains of North Carolina, it's pretty awesome working for Mr. Maple. I mean, I, I it's kind of a dream come true for sure. So you recently did a heat tolerant podcast with Matt. Yeah. So let's speak to just some of your challenges you faced in Oklahoma w- with Japanese maples and the excruciating heat oh, man. in Oklahoma. You know, it was a challenging climate. You know, I, I, I don't think there's very many people as crazy as me to try to, to try to grow a Japanese maple forest in Oklahoma. There were many summers where I thought, what in the world was I thinking? You know, because it's a lot of work. And, and as a collector, you, you kind of always go over the top anyway. And so, and then, you know, you get into those hot summer months and you realize just how much work it's going to take keep all of this going and you have all this time and money invested into it. And so, you know, you have to do it. So it, it's, it becomes a kind of a second job in a way is maintaining this garden. But for me, it was, uh, uh, yeah, I mean the heat there is definitely a challenge. You know, you have to have the right setup in, in your garden space. It's something you want to always consider. I mean, cause no matter what your interests are, if you don't have the right setting, you know, if you don't have the right space, uh, you know, it depends on how successful you're going to be. And so I always considered that, you know, I had a good friend of mine who's the one that got me into plants. Uh, he had a beautiful garden on his uh, father's property. Uh, shout out to my buddy, Bob Taylor. Um, but uh, he kind of got me into plants probably, I would say probably 12 to 15 years ago, mm-hmm. just really kind of thinking about plants. And, and I saw his success in his garden in Oklahoma. I thought, can do that, you know? Um, but the heat is the definite challenge in Oklahoma. And I think if I could give some key points, it's, it's really getting into, uh, and I, I know we've talked about this a lot is selecting the right cultivars, mm-hmm. uh, for your space, depending on whether it's in shade or sun. Um, and then understanding watering techniques, depending on, you know, where they're at in the garden, how much sun they get, how much shade they get, you know, uh, and then also providing protection from that harsh climate, which is through mulch and uh, just proper uh, placement as far as where that plant's going to sit. You know, so there was a big part of my garden that was a lot of shade and I didn't have to water those as often. Um, so I didn't have to spend as much time in that section of my garden, but I had some that were out in what I considered full sun, mm-hmm. six plus hours of sun that. I had to spend more time, you know, out there watering that, making sure they had a proper level of mulch on that. So it provided, you know, more protection for the plant, but it also created more work. 
<laughs> you know, so it's like, you know, there's, there's a trade off there of how, how far you want to take it. And, uh, but yeah, it's been a great, great experience for sure. Now you mentioned Bob and, and kind of how you got into gardening. Uh, was there a moment where you really realized like you know, Japanese maples are, are my thing? Like Japanese maples are more the part I want to focus on in gardening and, you know, <clears throat> all collectors, especially us, yeah. we're collectors, you get on that rabbit hole, you, you get into <laughs> yeah. it, you, you kind of put a toe in the water, right? you, you know, you process what's out there. And then, and then there's that moment where you kind of dive in and you're like, this is, this is crazy. Like, look at all this great stuff. Was there a moment like that for you where you kind of realized like maples were really growing in your, you know, your, your palate and that's what you're were drawn to? Yeah. So I, oddly enough, I would say that what really got me into thinking about just growing plants in general was, uh, my good buddy, Bob, he, he planted a Don Redwood. Yeah. Okay. And he created this beautiful little rock bed around it. And he, you know, and he babied that he was out there water, you know, and, and they can, they can handle some water. Right. And this thing grew so quickly, you know, several feet a year. And just within a few years, this thing was huge. It was amazing. But I, I just like, I started thinking about growing, uh, plants and, and really getting into that. And then when we bought our home in, uh, Tulsa, he brought me a Japanese maple for a home, you know, home welcoming gift, you know? So, and that was the moment that I was like, okay, so, you know, I could landscape this property. I had this beautiful <laughs> property and I'd never really, I mean, we had had a, a couple of homes before, but they weren't really the right setting for landscaping and that sort of thing. So, um, after he brought me that, that Japanese maple, I was like, man, I could, you know, I planted out in the garden and I was thinking, man, this is, this is nice. And I started really researching it and learning, you know, all the different cultivars and it just blew me away. The versatility that they provided, the beauty, all the different color changes that they went through textures. It, it really just captivated me that one type of plant could be that versatile. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, you, you know, it, it just really amazes me that uh, there's so much that you can do with just that species of plant. It's pretty amazing. Now, Brian, you're a huge part of the maple community. I mean, I think we had a kinship before, you know, I ever even met you in person. I always felt like like a connection with you. I actually remember adding you on Facebook like this guy's yeah. interesting. <laughs> But I, I always felt like, hey, there's going to be something more there because I always kind of had this kinship with you. Uh, speak a little bit about, you know, just some of the people we meet through Maples. Like, I know you have some close-knit friends yeah. that that you consider, you know, some of your best friends in the world. And they're people you've met, you know, through the world of Japanese Maples. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I, I could speak very highly of that. Um, I think that was another big part of what kept me so into Maples was, like, I... I began to make these friendships and relationships with people in the plant world. Yeah. And they were some of the coolest people I've ever met, you know, and, they, <laughs> right. and they're like, they're already a little yeah. eccentric, right? Exactly. In the maples. And, uh, you know, and, and they were kind of over the top and, and kind of extreme like I was and, and, uh, always willing to, to, to help me learn. And so, yeah, there was a, an amazing community of people in the plant world and among nurseries and, and, they all have this common passion, you know? And so I, I connected with that a lot. And, uh, you know, I remember I, I bought uh, a moonrise, a Acer Shira saw on a moonrise. I saw it at a garden center, you know, and I, I didn't even really know a lot about the plant at the time. Uh, and it was just like, wow, what is that? Like, that's a Japanese maple. Right. And it just blew me away. I was like, Oh my gosh, man, this thing is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And, you know, I was all excited. I, I bring it home. I get it planted out in the garden. I'm posting pictures, you know, and I'm like, man, check out this beautiful tree that I've got. Speaking of which, if you've been on social media, you know who Brian is. <laughs> He's all over social media. This guy's, I, I, I do enjoy sharing it, you know, and I, and I think, you know, there's, there's nothing more sad than having a beautiful garden. And then you're the only one that gets to see it. Right. Like, <laughs> right. I, like I feel like I'm always in that place where I'm like, this is so beautiful. I have to show other people so they can appreciate it just as much as I do. You know, Sorry, I, don't let me off track. You no, that, no, that's all right. Uh, I, I do share a lot of stuff on, on social media. That's for sure. Um, it's exciting and I get all riled up about it and want to tell everybody about it. But, uh, so anyway, so I, I, I got this moonrise. I get home and I'm, I'm posting like crazy. I'm just blown away by its beauty. And, and then one day I, I, I get a message on my Facebook and, it, and it's, uh, from Carl Munn. Oh, nice. And, you know, and, and I don't, I don't know who he is at this point. You know, I'm like, 
oh, hey, uh, hi, you know, and he's like, man, you sure have a beautiful moonrise, you know, and and we started this conversation and uh, he became uh, someone that I, I, I visited with very often, um, asked questions and advice and, you know, and just really got to know, I mean, I've never met him in person, but I feel like if I did, I'd just be like, Hey Carl, how's it going? You know, like, like we've been friends forever, you right. know? Uh, so that, that was a really unique experience. Uh, he appreciated my passion, um, for what I was doing and saw the beauty that I was creating and, and really, you know, encouraged me a lot. You know, there'd be times where he'd send me messages and say, man, I, your garden's just looking so beautiful, you know? And nice. so it just became like, a, you know, a, a really cool experience of someone I had, you know, never met in my life, but shared that same passion with me. And I find that a lot in that community. And I think for people who don't listen, who don't know this, Carl Munn is actually the guy who introduced Moonrise. Yeah. And he's, he's a very smart nurseman, good friend of ours. And, uh, he's been a, a mentor and friend to Matt and I as well. You, you know, as you get out there and work the lot of the world, you find out that it's a small world, but it's an even smaller world when you like plants. Cause like, yeah. Like it's a small community, and right. then when you get into a niche community like Japanese maples, like wow, what a, what a cool community, and like what a what a small world it becomes because everybody knows everybody, and it's such a small tight knit group. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, Brian, you had all these different Japanese maples, and having that many Japanese maples becomes a challenge in itself. But what tips would you have for people who have a ton of Japanese maples? Well, or, you know, or looking to have a ton of Japanese right. maples. Uh, you know, it's really, you know, the biggest tip is doing the research, which I, a lot of people don't want to do that part of it, you know, because they just want to buy a tree and plant it in the ground and grow it. Right. But it's it's really not that easy, you know, and, and it's always important to understand the plant that you're wanting to grow so you can be successful with it. I mean, there's nothing more heartbreaking than going out and spending some money and some time and effort and planting it in the ground and watering it and taking care of it and then watching it die. You know what I mean? And you're just like, Oh my gosh, I can't, you know, I can barely handle that. But I think, you know, that goes back to, you know, did you do your research on the plant? Did you understand what conditions it needed to be successful and grow and be a healthy plant? And that was kind of like one of the big things that allowed me to have the success that I did because I, I got into the information of it. You know, mm -hmm. I, I would read, uh, the Vertries book. And I, you know, and I'd get online and I'd, I'd research each cultivar, and study the websites, like your guys' website. I, I loved how that I felt like I had access to all that information. And uh, it really set me up to be successful with that many cultivars, you mm -hmm. know, because I, I needed to understand the plant and what it was going to take for me to grow a healthy, healthy garden. And, you know, that's the first step, I think the most important step. Yeah. That's one of the reasons why we have a lot of those videos just embedded on Mr. Maple too, is for people who are doing the research to be able to find a video of seeing hopefully a specimen out in the landscape. Yeah. And we try to put as much video content out there as possible to help people to be successful. Right. Um, I know that you're a big fan of putting trees in the ground versus containers. You like containers, you like bonsai pots, but you're a big fan of putting them directly in the ground. What benefits do you see for that? Well, I think, uh, as we all know, life gets really busy most of the time. And, uh, you know, when you, when you plant in the ground, you, you take out a lot of variables mm -hmm. that, that a lot of people struggle with was the balance of, you know, proper watering. Um, and then, you know, you have roots starting to fill out the pot and then it becomes a, and then you've got temperature, you know, you got to think about how cold it gets and how hot it gets. And when they're in a pot, you have to consider that even more because, you know, you're kind of lowering that uh, environmental uh, tolerance that it has because it's in a pot and not in the ground. Um, and then, you know, but, you know, again, I know garden spaces are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, so there is a, a challenge for, you know, being a collector. Uh, I came from my big giant acre uh, garden in Oklahoma. And now I'm, I'm on a small little lot in a community neighborhood. And so I've kind of come to new challenges myself of, man, you know, how, how many of these can I actually fit in here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but definitely ground planting for me is just the most uh, carefree t style of gardening mm -hmm. that you can have. And I've had more success with that as well. <clears throat> yeah. I think if you get a plant established in the ground, 
it starts to take care of itself more and more. Yeah. And that just frees you up with more time to uh, plant more Japanese maple. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So, Brian, we talked a little bit about the Oklahoma garden. Uh, let's talk about the North Carolina garden. How many how many trees are we, how many cultivars are we up to? I don't know about trees because I know there's some duplicates. Right. Not too many. Yeah. But. <laughs> well, you know, uh, definitely been on a fast track <laughs> since <laughs> I've been here. Uh, having access uh, to the nursery has been just pretty amazing. Um, you know, I'm always joking with my wife and telling her, you know, just think about how much money I've saved on shipping, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, uh, but it's been, it's been really cool. Um, you know, I learned so much from my garden in Oklahoma and, uh, I felt like I kind of left my mark there and, uh, hopefully for generations to come, there'll be a beautiful Japanese maple forest there in Oklahoma for people to stumble onto and go, wow, who did this? You know, um, right. but uh, so now, you know, uh, I'm working in this smaller space and trying to kind of create this this kind of oasis in my backyard. And I think I'm around 100, 120 cultivars, I think, at this point. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of reaching that maximum flow. Uh, there's always room to squeeze a few more in, but... <laughs> But, you know, I, I think that's probably where I'm at right now and uh, which it, it's looking really good, you know, in my mind. I, You, you know, you, it's hard to illustrate it to someone else when you're still in the process of creating. But I, I have noticed that working in a smaller space, you do kind of get to that point quicker. You know, like when I was working on a large acre lot, mm -hmm. I, I had a lot planted out there, but I didn't really have a defined area. So I was always trying to create these beds and areas to create, you know, defined areas in the garden here, it's been a little easier to kind of bring that definition to it. But. Now you had so many cultivars in Oklahoma and so many cultivars now in North Carolina. Was it a thing where you are going and trying completely new cultivars? Are you duplicating cultivars? What, what's your thought process on your new North Carolina garden? Yeah. So there are a few uh, duplicates there, just some of my all time favorites, you know, that I was like, man, I, I got to have another one of those just because of just how beautiful they were and how successful I was growing them. And uh, but I have focused a lot on the ones I didn't get to experience, you know, because there's so many more. And so it kind of gives me a whole new excitement to experience different cultivars that I didn't get a chance to grow there. I mean, you can't have them all. You know, like you try, but you, <laughs> right. you, you can't. So, you know, I, I get here to the nursery and I, I'm walking through these greenhouses and I'm, I'm seeing things I've never even heard of. And, and it's just like, man, I'm, I still have so much more to learn and so much more to explore into with the different cultivars. And uh, so, yeah, I have done a lot of cultivars that I didn't get a chance to grow there. And, and so it's exciting to get to experience those. So with that same question, which were the cultivars that you decided you were going to grow again in North Carolina that you grew in Oklahoma? Okay. Yeah. So this kind of gets me into a, like a top list, you know, of like <laughs> some of my ultimate favorites, uh, definitely at the top, uh, moonrise, uh, you know, I, I think in the sheer solvent world, I think it's probably one of the best cultivars out there, you know, just it's versatility, it's beauty, the color changes it goes through, uh, just the form and shape it can get, uh, just really, really beautiful plant. Um, and then, uh, another one was uh Shiguri Bato, which I think is very underused out mm -hmm. there. Uh, it has like, to me, like it's this interesting mix between what looks like a lace leaf, but it's not, it's not really a weeping, but you know what I mean? But it yeah. kind of has that form. So it's like this really cool mix of, of characteristics that I love about it. It's got that Matsumura style leaf, which is also one of my favorite styles. Um, so that was another one. I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta bring that back to the garden. Um, and then, uh, you know, I'm trying to think off the top of my head here. Uh, a lot of the, uh, Makawa types, yeah. you know, I, I had to kind of, those, those are, you know, like I, I had the mystic Makawa and, and, the, and the Japanese princess. And so like, I had to get those back because they're just amazing plants. 
You, I know you didn't have a red panda in I, your Oklahoma garden. I didn't. I didn't have the red <laughs> panda. I know that's like the envy of of especially in in the inner circle of of all of us Mr. Maple fans out there. It's such a great cultivar. I, I really appreciate you guys letting me experience it because it gets me excited. I literally go out to my garden every day to go check on the red panda because it's like constantly putting on this new growth. It's holding a nice color right now. Uh, you know, and, and it's really cool to experience a new cultivar like that, that really even hadn't been offered. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm kind of learning its characteristics along with you guys. And, uh, it's, it's really cool. I, I can't wait until we have enough of those to offer because I, I really do think, you know, there's so many Makawa types out there. Yeah. Uh, it stands apart, you know, mm -hmm. like I have, I have pretty much, you know, that group of, uh, Macaulay types in my garden and, and that red panda, man, I'm like, Whoa, that thing is nuts. Uh, it, it, here we are, you know, later, later in the spring right now, it's still got this kind of crazy pink red with new growth popping off the top of it. Uh, it's just, it looks really nice. And, and we've been in leaf since mid March, early March, right. early, leaf early, early, early leaf this year. Yeah. We and give you no favors on moving to North Carolina. We've had two of our worst springs. Yeah. I think ever your first two springs here have been like, you know, heavy frost, early leaf out, early, early uh, return to cold. So we've had a lot of that. Since and then a frost here. right about right, the same time. Right. The heavy plants freezes are that first year. Putting on their new growth. Uh, yep. So uh, talk a little bit about some of the challenges in North Carolina you faced here as, as, you've, as you've become a North Carolina gardener. Well, it's been, it's been really interesting uh, growing maples in a whole new climate, you know, so I'm having to kind of learn, you know, that process again, um, and what, what they can handle here versus in Oklahoma is, is totally different. You know, like just, uh, I haven't really had to be concerned with like, you know, how much sun am I giving this, you know, like, uh, as much as I did in, in Oklahoma, uh, I know I always, when I think of my garden, I think of your parents, a uh, beautiful garden over there because it, it's a huge inspiration for me and uh, because it's so beautiful and, and also that they were, you know, working within a smaller space as well. So yeah. it kind of gives me ideas of, of way I look at my garden. And uh, so it, it's been, it's been really cool. Uh, again, like it's, it's a whole new learning experience. You know, it's like I'm, I'm starting over, um, in a new climate, a new condition, even new soil, you know, like there's so many uh, levels to it. Um, but, you know, fortunately, again, I, I've been pretty blessed with the soil type in my garden. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm going to have a lot of success with, I've got good drainage. I've got a little bit of slope to my backyard. Mm -hmm. And so everything seems to be doing very well. Uh, I would say, you know, the biggest challenges, again, you mentioned it, are those like late spring freezes mm -hmm. uh you didn't get those as many in oklahoma uh usually once it started warming up it you know it was 100 degrees outside but <laughs> right. uh we basically had two seasons in oklahoma and that was winter and summer so here you get that full spectrum um so there is that challenge of you know the plants adapting to your surroundings and and you know we, we talked about it before there's a lot of cultivars that you want to give them more shade so that they slow down, yeah. When, you know, and, and that prevents that late frost damage and things like that. So trying to balance that and figure out where all the placement for the cultivars, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. It's a unique perspective you, you bring to everything from, from garden in Oklahoma to now garden in North Carolina. And uh, we just share that kinship of that excitement. I mean, that's the thing is like, we, we knew we were down with Brian the second we started talking to him because he gets just as giddy <laughs> as we do about, you know, what's to come, what's out there. Uh, you know, he gets just as fired up about older cultivars as yeah. we do and just as fired up about new stuff. So it's so much fun to just, you know, just be kids with somebody. That's kind of what we do in the garden a little bit. It's just kind of geek out a little bit and get excited about stuff and get fired up. And uh, I, I know you've brought a, a fresh perspective to Tim and I. Now, Brian, you have a YouTube channel that kind of documents some of these changes you've been through from the Oklahoma Garden and different places. Uh, tell people about your YouTube channel and kind of the evolution of it a little bit. Yeah. So, I, you know, when I had my Oklahoma Garden, I, I really enjoyed sharing. I, I did a lot of photography and then I, I kind of transitioned into uh, the videography side of it and sharing my garden. And uh, so, you know, the channel's kind of changed a lot since then. 
you know, when we decided to move to North Carolina, I was like, man, let's, let's share our journey. You know, this is a big, huge thing that I think a lot of people would be interested in seeing, you know, selling everything we had, leaving this place thousand miles from there, you know, showing up, trying to figure it all out. You know, I know millions of people do that, but, uh, you know, we thought it'd be interesting to kind of share our experience with that. Yeah. Uh, and then once we got here, you know, this, the endless beauty of this place is uh, really cool. Uh, you know, just so many waterfalls and hiking and, the, you know, you got the Appalachian mountains, you've got the parkway, you know, there's like so many beautiful places to explore. But now the channel is called uh, North Carolina Living. Uh, you can find that on on YouTube. And uh, I also kind of transitioned from a lot of adventure videos to my garden. So right. now now I'm I'm showing kind of showing off what I got going on back there and giving people updates. And I, I know I've, I've got a lot of friends that watch, you know, from the Mr. Maple group. And they're always excited about, you know, the next cultivar I'm adding to the garden and and Francis is doing a, a, a garden bed and we're doing some raised garden beds. So we're just like sharing our life and, and it's all about the North Carolina living and what we're doing out here. Oh man, I love it. Let's go get that some subs right now. So if you're listening to this, go ahead and, and hit up Brian on uh, social media. You can go find him under YouTube under North Carolina living. And he's got some incredible content, whether you like the great outdoors or maples or just fun content. He makes him and Brian, him and uh Francis make me feel bad when they first moved here, their videos of content in the area. I'm like, I got to get my butt outdoors again. <laughs> like they go do so much fun stuff and uh, it's fun to watch them fall in love with a region I'm from. Yeah. So it's a lot of fun watching people not from here show you what you should be focused on more from here too. Like yeah. I, I know I have mutual friends now, uh, but people from church that didn't even know Brian and Brian would be sharing his videos online and uh, you're already a local celebrity now. So people know Brian. Cause guys, like I was, I was uh, at a dinner for one of my children's schools and the guy was like, Hey, that Brian guy, he, he posts all his cool videos about uh, like hiking the mountains and moving out here. Does he, is that the guy that works for you? He worked with you? <laughs> like, yeah, that's exactly Brian. Like people know all about Brian already. One, cause he's such a big personality, but uh, his channel's great. And it's a great way to see just some fun stuff. I mean, I, I love your zest for life, man. I get it. Well, I appreciate that. And, and, you know, it's, it's a special community here in Hendersonville. That's, I think that's what we really loved about this place, kind of this small town, everybody kind of knows everybody and, and you get to share life together. And, uh, so yeah, we, we enjoy sharing our experiences and we, we have, we've had so many people tell us that, you know, they enjoyed us sharing our, our joy that we've had and experiencing the mountains here. And, uh, they just love that that kind of new life that we've been putting into things. And, and that we're glad to share it because I, I'm that way when I get excited about something where I'm just really just, I, I like, man, I got to share this, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing. I remember when we hiked to rainbow falls, right? Like, and it was a pretty intense hike. That's not a small, hike. it's like maybe around <laughs> six to eight mile hike, uh, through the mountains there. Uh, but man, when you got there to the, to the rainbow falls and you see that beautiful rainbow from the water spray off of that. I mean, it just like, it was worth it, you know? And I was like, man, there, and there's a lot of people that may never get to experience that. And so I thought this, what a cool way to share that moment. And, you know, other people who may never get that opportunity in their life to see that I got to show it to them and, and let them experience it. So I thought that was a really cool way for us to use our channel to show people the beauty of this amazing place uh, I always kind of joke around with, with Francis. I say, you know, when God made North Carolina, he really took his time. You know, he, <laughs> he put a lot of detail into it and and it created a, a beautiful, magical place for sure. Uh, you got me fired up. It's contagious. You talked my butt into hiking over Gregory Bald last year. So <laughs> at least there was somebody that got to hiking again because of it, because I hadn't been hiking in years. And uh, Brian's like, hey, man, you need to, I was coming back from a beach trip with the family. So I'd been sitting around eating some seafood. And he's like, hey. Monday, we're going up Gregory Bald, buddy. And so we, we <laughs> hiked up Gregory Bald. It was quite an experience. That was a an interesting hike and a good time. But we had a ball going up there to see some of those native azaleas. Over 3,000 feet of elevation gain. Oh, over a 10-mile hike. Gosh. I used to hike a lot. And uh, that, that was a... You know, again, I'm not exactly in peak hiking shape anymore, but that was, a, <laughs> that was an interesting hike. That was a hard one, even for uh, the experienced hiker. It's a, it's an, a, a, a full-scale... Yeah. Uh, you, you knew cool mountain when he went up there, right? Man, I'm telling you, that was a great experience. And uh, that's what I love uh, working for you guys. I mean, we're, we do so many interesting things. And uh, that's that's a perfect example of just 
of just how amazing it is uh, to have this experience. Is, I mean, you know, being someone that's not from here, hiking up Gregory Ball to see these beautiful native azaleas. I mean, it was epic. You know, it really was. And I watched back that video. I'm very proud of that that moment because yeah. I felt like we got to share again, something that a lot of people never get to experience. I mean, I've lived, I'm 43 years old. I, you know, I lived almost my half my life and never got to experience that. And so like, it meant a lot to me to have that opportunity to go up there and experience that and see the beauty uh, that God has created. And just those beautiful native azaleas just everywhere in bloom. We, like we timed it perfect, Man. you know, like it was, it was such a great experience. Dude, I felt guilty. I'm from here, and I don't know that I would have went and you not challenge me to get I'm like, all right, Brian, I got you. We're together, buddy. We're doing well, this. I knew I was up for a challenge because we had we had Tim and Wesley who were like spider monkeys <laughs> right. climbing up the side of this mountain. I'm like, I'm like, if I ain't got a, a trail buddy, I'm in trouble, man. Like I was like, <laughs> like me and Matt had to team up. We're like, we're gonna set a pace. We're, and gonna, we're gonna do this, you know, steady as the you know as steady as it goes. But uh, yeah, man, uh, that was that was awesome. I was glad you got you came with me because. Uh, you know, Tim and Wesley would probably just left me somewhere on that mountain <laughs> up there. <laughs> uh, it's, it's an experience I'll never forget. And it was just super fun, man. So, uh, and you actually can check those videos out on our YouTube channel too. They're pretty cool. If you ever want to go back and watch the full, I think we did a, almost a one hour video with some drone footage up there. So, yeah. so, so Brian, what, what's, what's the future Intel for you now? Well, you know, uh, the, the future is so bright, you know, like, uh, the opportunity to, to work with you guys every day is just huge for me, man. I, it, you know, it, it kindles that passion continuously. And like, I, I, I feel the kinship and the friendship that we have. And so, you know, and, and man, you know, we're growing so much here at the oh, yeah. farm and I, I feel like it's just like, there's so much more, you know, that we can do in, in the world of plants and creating that community you know, I love the community that we've created. I've got met so many great friends, you know, and like, uh, I, I love that thought of just of where we're going. Um, and you know, I, as far as just my personal life, uh, you know, it's just endless opportunity for me to experience, uh, this beautiful country here. And, uh, we're really, really happy. I mean, we, you know, sometimes you, you take that step of faith and you're not sure how it's going to work out. Um, but I've been just really, really pleased with, with how everything is, has, has, has played out. Um, you know, we've got our, our nice little home here in Hendersonville and I'm creating a garden again and, you know, and coming to work with you guys every day. Like, I mean, I, I don't know, like the future is definitely bright for me. Well, I, I know we've enjoyed having you here. I know my wife loves hanging out with Francis and talking about all their banking Oh yeah, issues, yeah. They both, they're both in banking. Yeah, we're married to a couple of bankers. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> we married up. <laughs> we did. We did. And I, I know they love hanging out. So it's awesome because we get to hang out and talk plants. And, yeah. Uh, that, that's always fun, even if we're just running over and grabbing ice cream. Yeah. Uh, one evening. That's always that's always a blast. I know we've we love having you here, and it's been awesome because you help bring in a different perspective, but then help keep everything fresh for me and Matt. So. Yeah. Uh, it's something I admire so much. I think it's one of the coolest things you can do. You know, so many people say like, well, I'm not happy in what I do or I'm stuck in a rut. My job's boring. I don't enjoy this. But how many people make a change and do something like how many people take that? You know, I'm going to I'm going to move. I'm going to find something I love doing. I'm going to work on that. I'm going to I mean, that's such a big step in life. And it's one I think most people are afraid to to do. I right. mean, that's a big change. Yeah, it's just such an admirable thing, like a I mean, I kind of had a moment like that where I was like, I think I just want to do this. Yeah. And, and to see it in you, it's like, it's like, that's so much fun to see uh, somebody, you know, you, you, everybody has jobs and, and jobs are jobs. Right. But when you get frustrated with them and you go, you know what, I think I'm just going to do something else. I'm going to do what I like and I'm going to find a way to do it. Well, you know, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, a year and a half ago, I was a, a building inspector <laughs> enforcing <laughs> building codes. And, and uh, so like we made you dive into the world of <laughs> editing now. <laughs> not, not exactly what I thought I'd be doing now, but uh, for sure, man, like, uh, you know, it kind of became uh, a moment there in my life where I, I realized that I had a lot of passion and a lot of joy mm -hmm. and I didn't really have a way to express it and, and to, to share it. And so, you know, I, I began to kind of plan and plot this, like, you know, 
all right, I'm going to change, you know, I'm going to make a change. And, uh, you know, I, I used to always say that in the world, there are two different kinds of people and, and there's people that watch and then there's people that do and mm. like, and you know what I mean? And so like, I was like, I want to be a doer. I want to, I want to be, you know, if, if this is what I'm passionate about, if this is the way I want things to go, I'm going to have to get up and make it happen. Right. And, uh, so yeah, I was inspired, um, to, to come and, and seize this opportunity. You guys are a big part of that, man. Like, uh, I, I really appreciate you taking a chance on an uh, <laughs> who's just crazy about plants and, uh, you know, um, I, I, I know that, uh, you guys share that same passion that I do. I see it every day. And so it's been really cool. Now, one thing, one thing I want to talk about a little bit here too, is you have such a creative background from music, from art, like from everything. Like you look at things differently than other people. And I think it's so interesting. Uh, talk a little bit about some of your maple photography. I think one of the things people might not know about here is, you know, Brian's been one, you know, you know, he's been editing our videos. Him and Corbin have been making us look great. We've been improving our quality here. You know, Brian has all kinds of ideas for what to shoot and how to shoot. And we're really improving that. But one thing you might not see in the back house is that our website is way prettier. <laughs> and so you might not realize it, but a big part of that's Brian. He's taken a lot of maple photos in the spring and fall and capturing different seasons. But speak a little bit about the photography and what, you know, what you're passionate about with that, with maples for sure. Well, there's something really special about capturing a moment in time, you know, and, and, uh, and then you get to keep that forever, you know? And so, and with maples, the transition is, is very quick and rapid. And so, you know, sometimes if you, you, you forget to go out for a couple of days, you go out and you've missed something really special that happened. Um, and so photography is a way to capture that moment and, and then share it with others and kind of show what these plants can do. And so, yeah, I, I really got into that because I, I love the idea of capturing that beautiful moment, that perfect moment, the right lighting, you know, in just the right time of the year that transition into fall color or, or that popping spring. Um, and then, you know, having access to these greenhouses, I know Tim, he comes up to me all the time, man, have you seen what this is doing? What this is doing? I'm like, yeah, man, let's grab the camera. Let's go check it out. Because, uh, we love capturing that moment too. I know you do too. It's like, dude, have you seen these azaleas over here? They're just looking amazing. And I'm like, let me grab my camera. Let's go shoot it. Uh, because that's our way to kind of show you guys, you know, how these plants can impact your landscape your gardens. Um, and you know, it, it's hard to visualize it unless you really have a, a great picture to mm -hmm. show you what that plant can do. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's a big passion of mine. I, I really enjoy it. I, I, I do photography at home too on my garden there and I love sharing it with people. Uh, but it, it's, it's pretty cool. Man, we, we've, we've really just enjoyed this. Uh, you know, I know, uh, we share a kinship, not only in maples, but in our faith, it's yeah. something we're always very passionate about. I know Brian's a brother in Christ, and we talk about that with people all the time. Absolutely. And uh, he's just been a big deal, especially to us here. Tim and I lost, and I lost my best friend and a good personal uh, close friend of Tim's growing up, too. And I know your mother passed. Yep. And uh, getting into this YouTube channel and doing stuff has been a big healing part for me. It's given me something exciting to do every day kind of get my mind off things and just yeah. really pour into something passionate and positive. Sure. And I just hope you know how big a part of that you've been. It's so much fun to create this kind of stuff with you. And I hope people see that passion that we all put into this and how much fun we do creating, you know, content and where it's growing from there. I mean, I think since you've started, things have kind of went nutty on the level of like, we went from like daily content to now we have a schedule to now we're doing podcasts. Yeah. There's always something new we're adding. Uh, but, uh, I love that, man. You really bring that passion that kind of inspires us to keep doing more. Well, you know, it, I, I share all of that with you, man. I, I really do. You guys feel like, you know, I'm, I'm away from my brothers, probably the most distance I've had from my, my brothers and my family, mm -hmm. um, that I've ever experienced, but, but I have you guys and I feel, I feel that, that brotherly kinship for sure. And, uh, man, it's, it's been, it's been amazing. And, uh, you know, I, I'm so glad to be a part of it. I think we got something special here and, uh, I share that with you guys and, and I try every day, you know, to, to think of ways that we can make this even more special and, and, and to try to draw people in to experiences, you know, what we have and, and what we have to offer. And, uh, through all of these different avenues, you know, our YouTube channel, our website, just our, you know, through photography, all mm -hmm. of those things, our social media pages, 
Um, it's really cool to see people respond to it. You know, like we've had such a positive response oh, yeah. to a lot of the effort that we're putting into it. So it's kind of confirming, you know, to know that the route we're going and, and what we're sharing with people, people are responding to it in a very positive way. And and it, it, it makes me feel good about being a part of it. I hope you get your autograph hand ready because we've got an open house coming up. I know you're going to be signing some more hats and T-shirts. And, like, it's funny the level – of like, I, I get nervous too. I'm like, really? Are yeah, you sure? it is. When somebody asks me for my autograph, I'm like, I'm not famous. Are they trying to get my signature for my yeah. credit card? <laughs> like I laugh, but like we have people that show up and they're like, I've got Matt and Tim and I need to get Brian on this hat. Or, and like, it's funny, like it, it's it just, but it's that camaraderie and that community we're building. And uh, I hope you guys know how much a big part of that y'all are too. Listeners on the podcast and the YouTube channel, you guys inspire us and make it a lot of fun. And you get me and Brian and Tim fired up to do more stuff. And I always feel embarrassed when people try to come try to get an autograph as well. But then I think about me when I was in Maples, the guy I was looking up to was Talon Buckholz right. and I went and got his autograph. So I'm like, okay, I kind of get it, but it's still, it's always kind of right. awkward. <laughs> you being the person signing the autograph, you're like, I'm not famous. But Yeah, it's like a joke with us, but I know Brian signs many at open house. So if you come here in person, <laughs> uh, you'll definitely have to spend some time with Brian. He's a, he's a big treasure and a big part of what we do here. Absolutely. Thanks guys. Well, Guys, we really hope you enjoyed today's interview with the ultimate collector. We're talking about Brian Roll, who moved from Oklahoma to join our team here at Mr. Maple, that much of a Maple collector. I hope you enjoyed our interview to get to know Brian a little bit more behind the scenes. He's an awesome dude to work with. And as you can tell, really passionate about Japanese maples. Guys, rate us five stars on any of your favorite podcast platform. Definitely be subbing the Mr. Maple show on YouTube and go give North Carolina live in a sub too. We're going to get Brian's subs up. We got to get his subs up on his channel. It's an incredible place to learn about maples, North Carolina, Oklahoma, and just life. Guys, I appreciate you, you know, giving me an opportunity to kind of tell a little bit about my story and my history here. Um, it's been an exciting adventure and, uh, we got many more adventures to come. I feel like here at the Mr. Maple farm. Oh man, I'm, I'm ready. Take care. God bless. Have a great day.